everyone, welcome back. My name's TJ. I am the owner of Dead On Archery here in Boise, Idaho. I am so glad to be bringing the new 2020 bow reviews to you. Whether it's on your computer, on your cell phone, laptop, whatever it is, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. We, this year, are changing things up quite a bit. In the past, we've jumped on with everyone else trying to get those bow reviews out as fast as we can when we get those bows in our hands. Those are great. Those do their job and those actually break down the bows and their specs. Well, this year, if you noticed, it's taken a little bit longer to get the re reviews out and I can explain why. One, I had a new kid, so I'm tired, as you can see, not getting much sleep. Um, but two is we wanted to really get these bows in our hands and actually go through them. We wanted to get them in customers' hands. We wanted to see what their feedback was before we put videos out. We wanted to basically run them through their paces. We wanted to, I want to be able to bring to you the pros and the cons of these new 2020 models. Man, it's going to be fun. So we are going to break them down. We're going to go over Matthews, Hoyt, Bowtech, Prime, PSE, and the Mission Line. Okay? We're going to break everyone down. Unlike what we've done in the past where we've actually done a video segment on each brand, okay, we will still do that, but it's going to be all in the same video. I'm going to break it up into chapters. So if you want to go ahead and fast forward to whatever brand you want to listen to and have me talk to you about, go right ahead. So we'll be there and you can fast forward right to that section there. But again, in this video, this isn't about going over all the specs of the bow, really showing the speeds and everything else like that. You guys have seen all of that. You guys, there's reviews out there about that. What this video is, is really getting to the core of the bow, the shootability of the bow. And the reason for that is if you don't have a shop that's close to you and you can't get out there, or if you're just like that type of person that wants to sit there and do your all your uh, reviews, look at reviews and everything like that, your research online before you come in, this is for you. And the reason we do this is so you can basically get exactly as much as information as you can to make that buying decision that helps kind of thin it down when you come into the store. And with that, you know, our whole design is to make sure that you feel basically like you've been shooting the bow after you reach the, after you listen to the reviews. Now I'm going to have a different shooting style. Okay. A lot of you know that I have an AC shoulder separation. I'm going to have a different hold than you will or a different grip but the overall information is going to be about the same that you can take into your buying purchase. But without further ado, again, thank you all for tuning in and we're going to get started. First off is going to be Matthews. We're going to break down the new VXR series. So here we go. Again, honest reviews. Sorry, Matthews. Sorry, Bowtech. Sorry, Hoyt. Sorry, Prime. Everyone else. They are going to be honest. I am going to go over the pros of your bows, but I'm also going to go over the cons and what we've seen already with some tuning issues or hand placements or anything like that. Overall, I have to tell you, all the bows are great like they do every year. It's getting harder and harder for everyone to make that decision. So hopefully this video helps. Without further ado, guys, let's go shoot some bows. testing range at the store at Dead on Archery in Boise, Idaho. This is what it'll basically look like when you come in to shoot some bows for yourself and try them all out. 
First off, you can see we have a whole allotment of bows. I'm gonna briefly go through all these guys because we have a lot to go through. And we're gonna break them down a little bit. Again, this video, we're not gonna go over a lot of the specs and the speeds and everything like that. This is gonna be more so of kind of what we've seen for tuning problems and also kind of fit and compatibility for the shooters as well. So that can help you make that decision on what bow you're gonna go with. This is the Bowtex. So the Bowtex, I have the Revolt, okay? The Revolt standard, they have the Revolt and the Revolt X. So we will get over both of them. The biggest thing with Bowtex this year, what they did an amazing job with and that we're happy with is this cam lock system. We saw this last year when they came out with the Reckoning. So the, we had a feeling it was gonna move over to the hunting bows in which they did and we're glad they did. So literally, to adjust it, all you have to do is go through this lock, untwist it, and then go into your axle, and then you basically just have an Allen wrench, so on both to, for the lock and the axles, to move that cam basically this way or that way for your lean. That's how you adjust it. There's no more yokes on here. The other thing is, is they did a really good job with center track. You're going to see all the other kind of cam systems, like the PSEs and the Matthews that have another separate yoke. This one, they did not do that, but what they did do is they put a cable on each side of that cam, which in a sense is balancing this cam out so it doesn't have any of that lean. Plus, you do have a flex guard as well. So that flex guard definitely is helping. Um, limb pockets, so the limb pockets and the limb pivots. This is a carbon fiber back uh, composite, basically material that is stronger than heck. So very lightweight, they do it to shape the weight. It's kind of a new technology out there that Botex done. Well, not a lot of people have talked about it. Um, at first I was a little skeptical of it because it looks like plastic, it feels like plastic. I was worried, you know, if you're going out in the woods and, and you trip and fall and it's cold, if you hit that and crack it, you're gonna have limbs coming out. But I'll tell you what, I was wrong. This stuff is extremely strong. We've sold hundreds of these bows and have yet to have any issues. They started doing this back couple of years ago with some of the bows. So um, this isn't something new on these bows the, with the limb pockets and pivots. It's something that's been out for a while, but literally no issues at all that I can that I can attest to that I've seen. So very strong. They definitely have earned it. They have shown that they're reliable and things are working great. So uh, this year they're not crazy fast. They still kept the SS and the SR6 in the lineup and the SR6 is going to be still their speed bow. These guys are right around that 340 mark. And, you know, Bowtech really went after shootability this year and really happy they did because these bows shoot phenomenal. They hold really well. Their clutch grip system that we came out with last year or a couple years ago is doing really good. So very, very happy all the way around. I personally shoot the Reckoning 38 as my target bow. So, and I use that cam system. Very, very accurate. Um, literally the first time I've ever Robin Hooded a pin knock arrow on a 23 diameter arrow. So um, it's, it proves, proves in the pudding. Great, great cam, great system, works well. Tuning issues, we haven't seen really a whole lot of tuning issues because this eliminates a lot of the problems. So the tuning issues with this that we have seen is guys will not know what they're doing and they'll kind of mess this up a little bit and we have to recenter everything and get it back in. Other than that, run that timing even like we've talked about. On some of these other bows, just make sure you're running this draw stop hitting here, this draw stop hitting here, making sure it's nice and even. But that's the Bowtech Revolt, comes in a whole array of colors, so definitely jump online, go talk to your local Bowtech dealer. They can get you all the specs, all the colors, everything that way. Um, great bow. We are going to shoot all of, most of all of these bows here um, later on. So right now we're just doing a whole over overview, so we will shoot them so you can kind of see how the draw cycle is, how the draw force curve is, the let off, and I'll go over kind of what I'm building in the grip as far as at the balance point when I'm at full draw and then also on the shot. So we will go through all these bows as well. So the next one is the Bowtech Revolt X. So this guy's a little faster, a little bit shorter brace height, but also a little bit longer axle axle as you can tell here. Again, a whole array of colors. Has the same system as the Revolt. Um, one thing I didn't talk about on the Revolt is this is a swing mod as well. So this is a swing mod, tons of adjustment on draw length, and they do a really good job as far as making sure they can hit all the shooters. 
and doing, you know, doing what they need to do. One cam kind of fits all kind of systems. So great bow. Um, the Revolt X, we definitely sell more of the Revolt X than the Revolts here in Idaho, just because we're longer axle to axle state. Um, we do a lot more spot and stock, a lot longer shots, but both bows are great. I kind of look at both of these bow techs as back in the, the Tribute and the Allegiance era. Any of, any of you that know that, so it was back in 2005 to 2007, you had the Allegiance that was a longer axle axle, a little bit shorter brake sight, that was the speed bow. And then you have the Revolt, so just like the Tribute, which was shorter axle axle, a little bit slower, but a bigger brake height. So both of these guys have the swing mods or the flip mods as well um, for the comfort and performance, where back then they had two different set of mods. They had the speed mods and the comfort mods. So that's the Botex. So we are gonna move on later down the line here to the new PSCs. Okay, next up are the new PSCs. So we have the Evo, the NXTs, so the 33, the 31, and then also the 35. I can tell you out of all the brands, people come in here and go, hey, what do you like best about this year with the bows? You know, who's basically going to be taking the cake? And I can tell you that even though we are selling more Matthews and everything's doing great there, the PSEs, I tell you, they did an amazing job this year. Out of all the brands, they surprised me more than anybody. So, and what I mean by that is not just how the cams work or how the mods work, everything like that, but they are, the shootability of them are awesome. Um, they actually come with this rubber grip, which is a bigger, fatter grip. If you don't like that, then you can just take this off. You, know, you have two options of grips. Also, what's new, which I think you're gonna see more manufacturers do, because this made a huge difference, is you have two ports down here for your stabilizers. So two different sets here. Now it's not designed to run two stabilizers out there. That would be kind of silly. So it's actually designed to help you with the balance. And I can tell you what, when you move that stabilizer down on the lower, especially on the 35, holy cow, it changes the whole dynamic of that bow, the hold of it. It was really solid and it eliminates all vibration. So pretty awesome on the PSEs. I can tell you there's a lot of buzz here locally about the PSEs. Um, they're doing very, very well for us, doing a great job. Their mod system, tons of adjust, adjustment in there. Again, a swing mod, really easy to adjust. And then also their let off. So the let off posts are adjustable from 80, 85, and 90%. So they'll do a phenomenal job with tuning everything in there. A little interesting fact, I know some of you watching this video have seen some of the other reviews on PSCs, and you've all seen that they actually, they actually rated these bows slower this year than they have in the years past. And these are from 10, 12, even 14 feet per second faster than what says on the tag. So when you see those at your dealer, they are shooting faster than what you what it actually says on there. So great job again with PSC. Um, they've done a lot of revamping with that company. They've got a younger group in there and they're kind of thinking outside of the box. So I definitely commend Pete for doing that. And I know it wasn't easy, but thank you, Pete. It's awesome, um, these bows. Again, we can't be happier with them. They're doing a great job. So this is the Evo NXT. They also have this same bow in the John Dudley, the knock-on version. So they actually just released that at 88. So it's a cool green with Optifade limbs on there with the knock-on logo. So we got some of those coming in. Hopefully your PC dealer has got some of those coming in because they are sharp looking bows. But definitely very impressed with the PSCs. Again, you'll see us shoot them later. So, move on here. So we definitely, this guy is the new Carbon from PSC, the new Mach 1. I can tell you I have one of these coming for myself to shoot. They have absolutely, totally changed the whole design of this bow, the whole feel of it, the grip. It's no longer feeling like you're holding a 2x4, everybody. So it's a great job on the grip, very comfortable, and the bow is still extremely lightweight. But the biggest thing, that I can tell you, other than the grip that we noticed, is how everything is coming beyond parallel now. Okay, no more limbs coming out here. So what that's done, what that has allowed it to do, is have less hand shock, less movement in the limbs. So cannot be happier with this new carbon stealth. This is actually rallying right up there with the Hoyts this year. So we're selling a lot of the Hoyt carbons and also these stealth carbons. So 
They were doing a great job. We sold more carbon bows this year than we've ever sold already. Um, so kind of the writings on the wall there. Tunability on these PFCs, I can tell you, they're not the easiest things to tune. I will be honest with you there. Um, they do give us a little bit of fits, but we do get them working on there. And the main reason is, is there's no yokes to really work with. There's nothing a whole lot you can do on the lean. You do have an adjustment here with the cable slide that will kind of get this out there with that cable guard. But um, we do work with them. We are seeing that they're, they're running a pretty good on their spines as far as the arrows are concerned. Um, so we're not really having any of those issues. But uh, again, running the timing perfect. Make sure you run that timing perfect on your PSCs. They do take a little bit more work to get tuned than you know some of the other brands, but overall, um, these guys have changed everything with their company, and it shows. They are doing a really good job. Again, this is the Carbon Stealth. Comes in a whole array of colors as well, even that new green uh, for the knock-on, but that's it right there. That's Carbon Bow. If you're looking for a light, high-end bow, the biggest thing too, made in America. So 100% made here, made down in Tucson, Arizona. So great job, PSC, this year. Great job. Uh, we can go carbon to carbon here. So we got carbon to carbon. This is the Hoyt RX4. Okay? So just holding that one to this one, this is a little heavier. Now, weight's not everything. And obviously, we'll get into some of the other bows. Like we've kind of already went with the Bowtex and the aluminums and stuff. Weight does help as well. It's just if you're a guy that counts ounces, that's going to the backcountry and staying back there for a while, that matters. So just like your camping gear and everything else, you count ounces. So it does matter. But Hoyt RX4, great bow. I mean, my gosh. I mean, it's phenomenal. They basically they made some small changes this year from the RX3. So if you're shooting an RX3, not a huge deal to upgrade to the RX4. There are some key factors that we, we definitely have had customers upgrade from the RX3 to the RX4, but I can tell you if you shoot the RX1, definitely go to your Hoyt dealer, take a look at these and upgrade. So this thing is awesome. It does a great job. What they did change a little bit is in the cam. So in the cams here, you can see the mod system. The draw stop is built into the mod now. So there's not separate little draw stops. And you've probably seen that on some other reviews as well for top and bottom. But what that allows it, you to do is, for one, not have to worry about anything coming loose and falling out. And then also it firms up that back wall as well with having it attached to the mod. But we're very happy with that. The other thing that they did this year, which I've got a rest on here, um, I can grab this one. So what they did this year is they added that dovetail system for the new QADs. So this will host those new Hoyt specific QADs and those integrated rests, just like what Matthews did. So it has that dovetail system there. So great job on that, um, integrating that. We're gonna definitely see a lot more, we're gonna definitely see a lot more companies doing it. Um, it's kind of almost the new way of how these rests are gonna be put on there and it does a great job. I know the guys over at QAD and I agree with them. The burger hole's been here for ages on these bows. So 2020, let's move away from the burger hole. Let's go to something different and put some new technology in there. Overall though, with the RX3, 4 versions, literally tuning on these has been phenomenal. We still have the yokes to work with. They're still doing a great job on their yoke system. Um, so it makes it easier to work that way. And we get a lot of questions too, is asked is on this bottom part, because you got two of these coming down here, what side do you basically base off of to, to time the top with? Our rule of thumb here at the store is we go off of the one that is closest to us, one that we can see. So we're going over and we're touching that one to the top. Now they have, I mean, it's so small to get them both to touch that it's, it's not going to really affect anything. I mean, literally you can slide a piece of paper to it. So it's like one thousandths um, that we're talking about intolerance there. So it's not like one's way off or the other uh, being that way, but Again, great, easy way to install rest. You just slide a cord down into here. It does a great job that way. So the Hoyts, um, phenomenal bow. I mean, they really, really are. So this bow here is the new Redworks. This is the Axios version. So of it, it also comes in this length as well, which is a shorter axle axle length. 
um, that comes in the aluminum version as well. So you have the aluminum and the carbon. Aluminum, man, it shoots good as well. We're just not gonna go over that because there's so many other bows to go with, but this does come over with the aluminum. Again, tuning issues. Um, I know some shops struggle with Hoyt. We do a pretty good job with them. We understand them. But nowadays, really, it's the older ones that kind of struggle. Nowadays, these guys, just make sure you run them, you know, nice and even on your timing. And what we do is we actually will take an arrow, we'll run an arrow down here, and we basically split that arrow so it's coming straight in half with that string, just like that. So for your lean. And that's a good starting point. And we basically, what you want to do is you want to tune off of your lean, you don't want to tune off your rest. So center, shoot your rest, and then do your lean. So a little bit of tech help there. So center, shoot, so get your center of your rest, and then you know work off your lean from there. Don't be moving your rest back and forth. But other than that, um, a little bit of a pill to tune sometimes. Uh, we have noticed that the RX4s like, just like the RX3, like a heavier, stiffer spine. So if you're borderline, or just below borderline of being in that stiffer spine, jump up to that stiffer arrow, it will help. So that's what we've definitely noticed. So that's the Hoyt RX4. Again, comes in a ton of colors, comes in the Cameron Haynes edition, uh, you name it. So go to your Hoyt dealer and check out these carbon bows, they're awesome. So next, I'm gonna to touch on the aluminum. So not only on the aluminum, so what Hoyt's doing this year and what, what I'm glad they're doing is they're starting series. They're starting series of both. So you have the Axia series, you have the Axia, they have the Ultra series, and then you have the Turbo series. So what they're doing is, is this is the Axia Ultra. They also make this in a carbon version and the same draw length, same, same everything. It's just um, actual axle is just basically aluminum versus carbon. I can tell you, uh, this guy here holds really, really well. The longer axle axle definitely does a good job there. You can see this here on the aluminum, a different riser design. Okay, they've got that different riser design. It looks really slick. They've done a good job uh, making it work there. They have a nice line down the backside to help you with center shots. So really happy with that. They've got the rollers. Um, they got the rubber as well. So now a little insight on the rubbers is they don't offer any kind of colors yet on these rubbers because when they inject the dye on these rubber, it actually will eat the dye or eat that rubber. So black is what you get uh, for now. So we'll see, we might see some changes next year with that. But again, the dovetail system is on all these higher end Hoyts. So they do a great job there, swing mod system. Um, again, not going over the specs. I'm just gonna do a brief overview on these. And then we will shoot them a little bit so you can kind of see what that's all about and what you feel. But definitely good, comfortable grip. Um, tuning again, same kind of thing, does a great job. Now, with Hoyt, make sure that their customer service is good to work with, they, and they will take care of you for warranty, but you need to make sure you do your part. So when you get your new Hoyt, make sure you register your Hoyt. Make sure you keep that original sheet. Make a copy of it, stick it in your gun safe, do whatever. So if anything comes down to it and you need to have any warranty, everything is track marked, and you did your part, and things will run smooth. If not, it will be a frustrating process. So I just want to let you know that they, they are a little bit more sticklers than other companies uh, to work with, but that's Hoyt, that's Hoyt's way, and it's okay. You just need to make sure you do your part. Um, they do that also to protect everybody as well um, and them. So again, great job. Uh, limb issues, we're not seeing a whole lot. Um, we do see some splinters that come off from the edges on some of these Hoyts, um, but again, they're getting better. They rounded the corners everything's better that way on that as well. So, but that's the new aluminum series. Again, comes in the smaller version as well. So one more Hoyt to talk about, because we're dealing with the series. So one more Hoyt to talk about, and that is the RX4 Turbo. So we have the Turbo series. They have this in the carbon and the aluminum version. Uh, some of those, if you've watched, watched my reviews before, you can tell I'm not a huge turbo fan. Um, these guys are very aggressive. If you're a new shooter to this, I do not recommend it, okay? So these guys are pretty rough to, you know, get consistent with and to shoot with. Now, if you've been shooting a long time, you know how to, you know, if you know your weapon really well, these will be an amazing bow for you. But basically, if you're a speed guy, there you go with Hoyt. These guys are pumping them out 350 feet per second or faster. These guys are not a swing mod system. It is a draw. 
uh, mod system. Okay, so you have mods on here, kind of like the old days, and then it has the old draw stops system. So just like with the upgraded this year on the RX4s, it still has the draw stop system. Not like it doesn't work or have you know have any of that, but we definitely have seen where guys have lost some of these draw stops. So that is a little bit of an issue, a little bit of a concern. Um, but overall, hundreds of these bows got sold, thousands of these bows got sold last year, and no issues. I can tell you for a turbo though, this bow is awesome. Man, this thing shoots good. So even the aluminum shoots amazing. So it really does. It's solid in the back wall. It's got a little bit bigger dwell zone. But then even on the tuning, on the tuning, years past we have to run the top a quarter ahead just so we can get it to tune. Now, right even. So you've got a nice, good, firm back wall. It's not squishy. And it doesn't really want to jump too much forward on you. Now, this does have a lighter let off than like the standard RX4, their standard Axius or anything like that. Um, so these guys, you know, they are a little bit jumpier. But overall, great solid bow if you're looking for a turbo. Again, comes with that new dovetail mount system on there. Um, the carbons have a separate aluminum piece that's on there. Again, I have rest on here because we're going to shoot them, so I can't really showcase that much. But but they do do a great job. Um, again, the turbo definitely a huge improvement. Nothing really different from last year to this year except for the integrated rest on there for the turbos. So. But other than that, um, if you're looking for a turbo, these guys have been tried and true last year. They've kind of been put through the ringer and they've done a really good job for tunability, shootability, and for longevity. We haven't, I haven't seen one turbo yet come in with limb issues. So that's really good there. So that's our Hoyts. Next, we're gonna look at the new Primes, the Black Series. Again, these guys come in all kinds of different lengths, okay? So this is the black one, this is the black five, and in the middle would be the black three, okay? I just have two hands up. So we have the black five and we have the black one right here. These guys are still using the center technology, center grip technology, which has been proven, it's done really well. Uh, the balance is awesome on these guys. They come in all kinds of new colors this year. Do a great job that way. And the cool thing is, is they even dump the price a little bit, a hundred bucks on these bows this year to get them out, even with the new cam system. But from last year to this year, what's the biggest thing you notice? Right? The cams and that big old O-ring. It's like you can jump through it, right? Okay? So that is the Primes, the Black Series. I'm gonna hang this one up here so we can talk about it. So new this year with the Prime Blacks, which we're super excited about, is Man, it's man, it's so much easier and nicer to set these up for people to shoot. There are no longer drawing specific cams. And I know some of you might feel that's negative or bad, but I can tell you, you do lose a little bit of efficiency, but man, it's not very much at all. Not, not enough that it will warrant not to have this swing lot system because it makes it so much more convenient for us dealers to set them up for you to come shoot and for you to try out. So this guy here, awesome system. Um, Prime, you nailed it this year. Amazing job. So basically what they've done is they've got two, two screws on this side and they got one screw here. This one screw is your indicator on where that draw length is going to be. So literally if we have it on the five, okay, that's where we're going to be here and there. So you look at the cam chart, you look at the five, you're good to go. That's your draw length. Um, you move the draw stop as well and they've got the numbers along that track of that draw stop if you can see that. So a lot faster that way, and they actually picked up some speed too, and they picked up some length as well, being able to go to this cam system. So overall, a great job. The cam system is slick. It's got a lot of cutouts, really nice job. Um, again, they've done that bigger cam on top, smaller cam on bottom. That's the only true way you can get zero knock travel. So as of right now, as far as I know, Prime is the only one that has zero knock travel legitimately. Um, the concentric can system on the Matthews does a good job at that, but I can tell you they're the same size. Um, I'm not an engineer, so don't hold me to that, but as far as what I know personally is this is the one and only true way to get that straight knock travel, and I could be wrong on that, um, but I definitely enjoy them. They're a great shooting bow. Uh, they don't, the cams don't sing to each other anymore. You don't hear that twine noise anymore happening. 
um, done a good job. And then this new yoke system, okay? They had to come out with this whole new yoke system, which kind of looks like the old monster yoke system, doesn't it, on the Matthews? So that yoke system there comes up, and that just keeps us being able to be center tracked with that new swing mod system. So great, great job there. Um, I would assume that Prime eventually, this year they didn't do it, but next year they'll probably come out um, with that new QED REST integrated system on there. But uh, riser design, you can definitely tell it's a Prime. So they do a good job. Uh, they, you know, it's one of those things that they make sure that people know you're holding a Prime because it definitely looks like a Prime. They did feather them out this year on the front and the back. So kind of sleeked out that a little bit more machine work there on there, but uh, the Black Series, I'll tell you what, uh, have been the best Prime bows that we've ever, ever had, hands down. So great system, great bows, Prime, you guys did an amazing job. Tuning issues on these guys, tunability, uh, they do tune fairly well, they do do a good job that way. There's still a little bit of things that could be a little bit tidied up on the cams as far as where exactly we should be putting the draw stop. And then also, um, you know, when you run timing, when we hit timing and make sure that, you know, we can set those, those cams 100% perfectly on there. So they are a little bit of a booger to, to get going, but not much. Um, these guys don't have the sinkholes anymore. So that's kind of a bummer. So the sinkholes really helped out as well. And that's kind of what I'm getting at with those cams and the draw stops. So it is a little bit of a guesswork, but you know, we get them figured out and you get them working. So we aren't really having issues, but I can definitely say it would be a little bit nicer to have a direct, you know, here's your, here's your timing and everything else like that. Um, we do have a little bit of marks down there, but kind of tough to see. So but that is the Prime Black Series. Uh, shoots really well, comfortable, not a whole lot of hand vibration, and they're quieter this year. So great job on that. Um, we've yet to have any limb issues with Prime. So since we've started selling them, which we've sold them for a long time. So really good job, Prime. Um, we haven't had, you know, I don't think any limb issues with Prime that I can think of. So they're doing a great job, big aluminum limb pockets and uh, solid bows still have their flex guard. So all the bows are still coming with their flex guard system. So this guy is center track, it's doing a really good job. Um, the tracks are deeper in there. So strings and everything are doing good. The only time that we see a problem when strings are popping out of the cams is if someone puts some custom strands, custom screws in here, and they go too big on the strands. So when we build them and stuff, we make sure we keep them that small strand count uh, to keep them in those tracks. If you go too big, it'll loop them out, and you can, you know, on a side build, kind of torque them. But that's the Prime Black Series. So next are the Matthews. Okay, so now we go on to the VXRs. So the VXR series, you can see I have the 31 and a half and I have the 28. So standing right there side by side with each other. These bows, even though a lot of people, I can tell you, say, oh, they didn't change much with Matthews. All they did is cut more out of the riser. I can tell you, you're pretty much wrong. Um, so you can hate me for that one there. But basically the reason why I tell you wrong is they did take more out of the riser. So they definitely did. The risers definitely are slicker. Um, didn't really shave a whole lot of weight. That's one kind of con that I think would have been nice is you take that much out, you should shave some weight, but they did not. But I can tell you the reason why these are different bows this year is because the actual geometry of this riser is completely different than the years past. So especially like the Vertex and the Triax. So the balance of this is a lot better. If you notice on the Vertex and Triax is the balance, the balance was forward on there, where this one's more stable. And how they did that, more even, okay? How they did that is they made these risers a lot longer. So this riser is like an inch and a half to two inches longer than the riser on the Traverse. So an extremely longer than the Vertex. And what you're gonna get with the long riser and then using the same brace height, the six inch, is you're gonna get a lot more forgiveness. So this bow here shoots, holds, fills better than the Traverse um, overall, and especially the Vertex. So this guy, they really kind of went after that more of that target integrated system into the hunting world and still kept it a short axle axle with how those limbs go way back in like that. So crazy. Um, big cams, obviously they've had these big cams, these press center cams for a while. And these guys do offer that switch weight mod system. That switch weight mod system, just so you know, why is it so important? 
The reason for it is one, for Matthews is they don't have to worry about one limb. So, which is the genius part on them. For two, it's important for you because for resell down the road later on, if you want, you want to upgrade and get to the newer version after this, is it's a lot easier because this bow with the same set of limbs can go 55 to 75 pounds. So now you've got a bigger range of people you can fit it with. And the reason how you can do that is, is these guys come in 60 pound mods, 65 pound mods, 70 pound mods, and 75 pound mods. So you're changing the weight with the mods, not a lot with the limbs. Okay, keeping that at that peak weight, it's a great ideal situation, especially if you're, uh, if you're a big time hunter and you're like me, like I go to Africa, I go to Texas, I go to Alaska, I go to Canada, um, I go all over and I want to shoot bows and that, you know, with doing something like that, these are really sweet because now if you go to Texas, let's say you're going to go hunt some exotics, you can get the 60 pound mods, get your bow all set up, go shoot, hunt. And then boom, you turn around, you got to go to Alaska and you're going to go hunt a brown bear or a grizzly or whatever, a moose, and you want to go 75 pounds, easy. Swap the mods, put it on there, go reside in, and you're good to go again. The biggest thing, as I can tell you, is make sure you stay in the right spine of your arrow. So if you're switching mods like that, the biggest thing is, is stay in the right spine. Great job, Matthews. Um, does a good job. This year they came out with that SES system, that Silent Connect system as well. Uh, that bolts onto the middle between your limbs. So they will not come with the bows. So just to clarify, they do not come with the bows. That's an add-on. Um, we did get some demos at the beginning of the year when they launched that had them with it. But other than that, they do not come with the bows. So that is an add-on. They have a sling, and then they have the rope systems so if you're using it for a tree stand, everything that direction. Again, most of you have seen the reviews. You've seen all the cool stuff. Um, I'm going to go over the shootability of them. Grip, really comfortable for most people, not for me. So I, I can't, for some reason, love these grips, but they do sell well, and I'm odd, okay? Me, TJ, I'm odd with the grip. So the grip uh, is, I would say, 98% everyone loves them. They're doing a great job with that newer grip, and the balance of them, I can tell you, is phenomenal, and the shot is unbelievable. So I put these guys right in there, or I put Botex, I should say, right in there with these. A lot of times we're referencing back to the Matthews because of how dead in the hand they are and how quiet they are. Man, these things shoot good. Um, tunability on both of these guys, on all the Matthews in the years past, um, they do tune easy, but we have seen issues with the top hats. The top hats are the shimming, okay? The shimming right in between the cams. So if I come over here to the camera, okay, you got these top hats right here. So this is your shims. They do come out and they do move. They're pretty easy to move. They're pretty easy to take out and change. Um, and we have definitely fixed a lot of guys' issues shooting Matthews that were frustrated and wanted to basically, you know, almost throw their bow out the window because they couldn't get to shoot. And a lot of it is your top hat. So if you're getting a hard tip right or tip left here and you can't seem to fix it, go to your local dealer. Uh, tell them that, you know, either you need to swap your top hats or try some different sizes. They're easy to do, so hopefully your dealer is okay with that. I can't talk for your dealer. We do them a lot here. Um, that's the only tuning issue that we have with the Matthews. Once you swap those top hats, this bow shoots lights out. So run that timing perfect, swap those top hats, and you're good to go. So if you are having issues tuning and shooting it, a lot of times it's gonna be the top hat. Um, sometimes it will be your grip. As far as like pressure, um, these guys, they really like to have just basically a neutral grip. So a medium to neutral grip right in here on that. You don't want to be basically throating it. We don't want to have outside pressure, or inside pressure on those. Again, that is the Matthews VXR series. They did a great job. Um, brand new bow this year, it really is. So the, the only thing that's the same are the cams and the mods. That's it. Everything else is new. So still has that dovetail system for their integrated rest. Still running that with QED, still a solid system. Doing great there. Um, can't be uh, happier with that. And they even give you little timing holes as well um, on the cams. It makes it nice for us to get them set up and get going. So again, new geometry on the riser. We're going to see some marketing come out from Matthews with that. I guarantee you we'll see some stuff coming out with that to basically make that a point. Not a lot of people are aware of that. So hopefully you can share that knowledge that this bow is a new geometry of the riser. It holds different, it feels different. And how they did that is by longer length of the riser. All right. Thanks, guys. Next, we're going to go ahead and we're going to pick some of these out. We're going to shoot them, going to go over them, and we're going to go to it.
So here we go. I appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Really, thank you. This is awesome. We enjoy it. All right. So next, we have the VXR. So this VXR already comes in two different lengths. And I know you've seen that already. Now, this is the 28. I also have the 31 and a half. The 28, I'll be honest with you, is we're in here in Idaho in the West. It's not a huge dominant bow for us, but definitely you guys in the East, Midwest that are shooting tree stands, ground blinds a lot. This bow obviously is going to be your, your bread and butter. I can tell you we have sold more 28s than I can actually uh, call for. I, I did realize we're going to sell so many 28s that we have. It is a nice compact bow. Guys are liking the compact bow. Uh, people out there that are riding horses, great bow. So you can throw it in your in your pack saddle, you can throw it in your scabbard, everything like that, or have it on your back, in your backpack, and it's it's nice and compact. Or even guys riding e-bikes. E-bike riders, bike riders, you can have this strapped to your backpack, put it on the frame, whatever you want to do. It's nice and compact, it works out really well. But we're gonna go ahead and shoot it, and you guys can see what that's all about on there and go from there. So here we go. So I just shot that tactic, okay? At the same drawing, line, everything else like that. This guy's shorter inch axle axle, and it actually pulled a little smoother. So that's where we're at there. I can tell you the balance, the hold, left to right, the up and down. Great, great bow. So definitely, again, vibration, not a huge thing, but when you're shooting bows, you know, you kind of want to know about it. So definitely no vibration. Okay. VXR 31 and a half. So we're gonna shoot this VXR 31 and a half. This is at 28 and a half inch draw length. Now Matthew seemed to run a little long, so it's gonna put me closer to about 29 possibly in there. Again, 70 pounds. And everything's there. As you can see, I mean, it's night and day difference on that draw. So versus the tactic, extremely night and day versus the 28, definitely a little better. And then in here, so really, really smooth. It really feels like you're pulling like 60, 65 pounds on the 31 and a half. Again, the balance, okay? The balance on the 31 and a half, I can tell you is really nice. Hold really well. Now let's hear this on the shoot. Okay. I would think if you were to have a sound decimal reader, uh, this might be just a tick bit louder than the 28, but that could just be maybe something on the boot, the bow, you know, shooting through the whisker biscuit or something. Because it did have just a smidgen more of a ting, but really nothing. I can tell you, Matthews this year, um, just kind of like we've done in the past as well, definitely a quiet bow. I would put these right in with the Botex. So the new Botex are extremely quiet as well, as far as on the quiet scale. But overall, shooting it, uh, you know, balance was good. Hand shot felt good. Very solid shooting bow. Very happy with it. Uh, and we'll go from there. So next up, you're going to see us doing the Hoyts. So the 2020 RX4 Hoyts and the Axios series Hoyts is what we're going to be bringing in. All right. Thank you, everybody. And we'll see you next time with Hoyt. We're going to get into the Redwork series. Okay. So the Redwork series, is, this is the turbo. Kind of see here with this bow again, 70 pounds. Did you have a lighter let off? Did you have a lighter let off than the other bows do? Uh, but overall, you know, still a good solid back wall, still has that let off. You can see, definitely wants to kind of jump on you if you let down enough, but you can still hold, you can still hold that very well and get into that back wall. So, Again, it is a turbo. If you're a new shooter, I do not recommend. So the turbo, for sure, as I roll up my tag into it. Um, 
it, it's just a little finicky. It's kind of how I put it is, is basically this is like us handing you the keys to an Indy car and saying, here you go, don't go crash it kind of thing. So they are pretty aggressive um, as far as that's concerned. Shootability of them, there's definitely better bows out there for shootability and accuracy, but if you're after something that was speed, <laughs> this bow packs it. Um, as you can tell right there on the shot, pretty quiet, pretty quiet for turbos. In the years in the past, turbos have been pretty darn loud. Again, this is on the Carbon Redwork series, so really not a whole lot of hand shock. In any of the Carbon bows, you're going to have a pop. You're going to have a hand pop, so it's from hitting this draw stop here, it's just going to be a pop. There's not really a vibration, it's just a pop. Okay. Now on to the standard RX-4, okay? So this is the standard RX-4 through Hoyt. This is the number three cam on this bad boy. Um, so that gives you that draw length range from 30 to 28 inches. Let's go ahead and shoot it. You kind of go, go over the balance, everything like that. To me, it, it balances and kind of feels a lot like the turbo. Uh, but this one does have the 85% let off, so you can definitely sit back there, kind of relax a little bit more. Uh, it does still have that movable grip as well for your tuning, which for us, you know, we didn't see a whole lot of difference. So we didn't see a whole lot of difference as far as for tuning when, when people come in and, and they have issues with left to right tears with moving that grip. I mean, honestly, for us, it didn't really do much. Um, we still had to go back to the yokes and do yoke tuning on that. Anyways, points are awesome. So the last one that I'm going to go over, okay, I brought this in for the aluminum series. Now this bow is the ultra series. I brought it in because all I have is the short guys right now. So they do make the aluminum and the ultra series and they make the carbon and ultra series. So if you're a bigger guy, you like the, you don't even have to be a bigger guy, but you like the long axle actual uh, shooting capabilities, the stability of that. You definitely have some options with Hoyt. <clears throat> the nice thing is as well is they change the draw lengths again. So this is the number three cam on this bow, and it only goes to 30 inches as lowest, and it goes up to 32. So you definitely have some room with that. Now, if you're past 32 inches, you have to get in, into the double XL, which I didn't bring the double XL in to do the review with. But they do offer that. So if you're a bigger guy, you need that 34 inch draw length, you, they have options now with Hoyt, which you're probably pretty familiar with. But it's important to know, you know, these ins and outs on these bows. And we've had some time with them now to play with it. So again, this is 30 inches, so it's gonna be fairly long on me. But the absolute stability of this long axle axle, man, you can sure tell the difference. So from shooting the smaller bows to shooting this, holy cow. <laughs> so you can definitely feel the difference on the hold on there. So it's definitely worth it, great shooting bow. As you can tell, not very loud. Hoyt did an amazing job from last year. Um, they really implemented that sound and then they carried it over to this year. So with the new rubber and dampening, they hold really well. The grips are definitely very comfortable. Now, in the aluminum series, it does not come with that adjustable grip, that movable grip. But like I said, for us, that adjustable grip, movable grip, really cool idea. And it maybe helped a little bit, but not, not enough to where it warrants that you have to spend that money to get that adjustable grip. So. All right, so we reviewed the Matthews, the Hoyt, and now we got to went ahead and grabbed the Botex. So we're going to do the Botex next on there. So I have the Revolt, the Revolt X, and the new Reckoning 38. So I actually personally shoot the Reckoning 38 right now. So I went ahead and grabbed my bow so you guys can kind of see how that works and what it looks like. But on the Revolt, so again, 70 pounds. This one's at 28 and a half. So the other Revolt X I have is 29 and a half, so a little longer. But overall, the cam itself on the draw, um, amazing let off. Like you literally have to push down on that. So the let off is crazy, but the cam, the draw force curve is pretty smooth. It's still, uh, you know, I, I honestly think that the Hoyts are a little smoother myself. 
Um, but the it's very stout, and I guess you could say you know you're pulling back through that bow, and it gives you that reassurance that this is a good quality solid bow. So um, again, but smooth. I mean, it, it's good. I mean, you can see it. It's it's definitely smooth and everything else like that. But you definitely feel like you're pulling seventy pounds. But it holds again the grip for me that clutch grip system. Clutch grip system, really nice. Got one of my packs off. Um, overall, very quiet. I put this right up there with the quietness of the Matthews. It does a really good job on the quietness of it. I mean, it is nice to use. So that's the Revolt. So the Revolt, the Revolt X. Okay, the Revolt X is definitely our best seller. A little bit faster in speed. So again, longer draw length. This is an inch longer. Um, so I can definitely kind of feel a pump towards the end because it's stretching me out. But super solid bow. Both of them really no hand shock. Uh, the return on the bow when you actually shoot is very rewarding. Um, basically, it does tell you that you shot an arrow and, and things are moving in that direction that's powerful. So it, it's a good feeling all around bow. Uh, for me, it definitely is as well. And, and I can tell you, you're going out and looking at bows, you got, you, it's, it's a lot of work. No, you got a lot to choose from, a lot of good bow companies to choose from. I'm just giving you my two cents. Again, archery is very personal. So whatever you find deemed to work for you, I'd love if you guys put down on the comments what bows you like, uh, what's comfortable to you, so people can kind of really kind of see the comparisons here um, and an overall consensus of what people are liking out there. So again, Revolt X uh, through Bowtech, great technology, good job Bowtech, I mean, super solid bow. So now, on to the Reckoning 38. So you can see definitely a lot different riser design. It's off of that Reckoning design, but longer, sleeker, uh, gives you that balance. I've got all my sidebars and back bars and front bars and you name it. This is my target setup uh, running the Hamsky uh, target peep that they do, their pro. So very, very awesome. Great shooting bow again. Grip is a very comfortable. If you get the Reckoning 38, it's going to come with a different degree grips. I run mine at the highest, so mine's at the highest degree that they come with. Uh, but they do come with the different grips and everything like that. So um, again, flip disc doing that as well. I shoot all mine on Comfort is where I shoot mine at. So up there, you can see uh, for my target setup, I'm just running a standard QED. I don't run like lizard tongs. Uh, I don't run anything like that, which is totally up to you personally. Obviously, I don't shoot this style of release uh, when I hunt or when I target shoot, but kind of show you here the style that I use is like a back tension, um, Longhorn, Scott Longhorn is my personal uh, target release. But very smooth, very good, clean bow, really happy with it. get an X. So yeah, very, very happy with it. Um, it shoots really good. The return in it is really nice. It's a lot of times the target bows, you can hear them twang, you can hear the vibration. Um, they're just, you know, they're all about what that arrow does downrange, which is obviously the most important thing, but I also like to have a little bit of comfort. So that's why I like this guy. That's why I shoot it. But that is also new this year is the Reckoning 38 with that cam lock technology. So if you're a guy that likes to kind of do your own work and knows what they're doing, Bowtech is your bow for sure. So, Okay, so today we're bringing in the bows that surprised us the most this year with all the new bows for 2020. And that is the brand new PSC line. They did an amazing job. They pretty much revamped the company, revamped the bows, and really did a good, solid job on their bows this year. They really did. So with that said, we have the PSC Evo NXT line. This is their flagship line here. This is what you're going to see at all the pro shops. 
These guys are bad to the bone. Did a really great job, like I said, this year. They come in at 31, which is this one, and at 33, and at 35. Phenomenal bows. So what I can say with that is, is they basically brought all some of, some of the old technology they've had before and then implemented some of the new technology. So these have that evolved cam system that they've had for a while with that adjustable let off that 80, 85, and 90% just by adjusting this little bolt here on either side. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna shoot them. You're gonna see kind of how they sound, what they look like at full draw. And basically I'll give you a little bit of an idea of what I'm feeling. That way when you shoot them, you kind of have an idea of what to expect. Or if you can't get out there and shoot, then hopefully this helps you make that decision. Again, these guys have this grip system here, this rubber grip system. You can take it off underneath basically just the riser, but it's real comfortable. And I believe you can get side plates for them out there. So we're gonna shoot this one first, and then I do have the new carbon stealth as well. So shoot this guy. All right, we're gonna shoot this. This is the Evo NXT 31. Now, because of all the, we're doing all the bows, do not have time to shoot to the chronograph with all of them. But what we are going to do is we are going to do a head-to-head -head with all the same bows, pretty much at the same specs, apples to apples, and we're going to list them as far as who shot the fastest and everything like that. We'll give you a breakdown on what draw length we're shooting them at, what poundage, and then also what arrow weight as well. But that's going to be later on, but first, here's the Evo NXT 31. Good. Good, good weight. A little kickback. Okay, a little kickback. Putting the stabilizer out there is going to help. That's what that balance is going to be for. But literally, pretty much no hand shot. So quiet as well. Very quiet. Let me shoot it again. Again, this is the Evo NXT 31. Little bit on that back side. Just a little bit, but hand is good, hand return is good. Yeah, everyone that's come in here just loves these bows. So PSC, good job. So that's the Evo NXT, the Evo series. Again, I'm not gonna go all through all of them because there's so many of them, but they do have the 33, they do have the 35, and the next one we're gonna do is a carbon stealth. And guys, when you're going out and shooting, line them up. You know, get all the bows you want to shoot, come into the shop. You know, hopefully your dealer do it. Our dealer, you know, us as a dealer, we do it all the time. But grab three or four bows, and then that way you're going to shoot them side by side. Just kind of like what I'm doing right now. And you can kind of see, feel the difference, hear the difference, everything there. So this is this Carbon Stealth Mark One. This is in the Kuyu pattern. comes in all kinds of different colors, everything that way. As you can see this year, a lot more parallel design, or beyond parallel design, I should say. And they still were running those Evolve Cam systems. So overall, great bow. Obviously, did a great job on the grips, so really thinned up those grips as well. We're gonna shoot this guy. Now, one thing to keep in mind on these PSCs is make sure you look at those speeds. I can't say it enough, look at those speeds, because basically what they say on here, add another 10 to 12 feet on the car. Oh, they did underrate them a little bit. Man, way different on like this. You really tell that big time. But I love how this thing folds, that full drop. It's a light bow. But man, that balance is really good. Great, great feedback on the bow. Good, solid bow. So we just reviewed the new 2020 PSCs. Now we're going to move on to the new Prime Black Series. So this bow this year, again, brand new cam system. So have that swing mod system in there. They did remove that draw stop that goes to the limb. Now it goes onto the cable. So it does give you maybe just a slight bit more of a, of a bounce to it, but uh, or a squish, but not too bad at all. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to put these cams to the test. So there's that bow. I've got the black one, and I've got the black five as well. They also make a black three, 
So the difference is 31 inches axle axle, 33 inches axle axle for the black three, and then 35 for the black five. I'm doing these two because this is basically the biggest in comparison here. So we're going to go and see how this baby is works. Holy oh, cow. So for 70 pounds and a short draw length, that actually surprised me. That was awesome. So very nice, smooth draw cycle. Again, pretty good solid back wall. Uh, the balance for this little guy is actually pretty incredible. And I think it's because of how that geometry is and that grip moving that center. So very good and comfortable. Okay, definitely has got that kick back on there. A lot of that too is my grip as well and how I'm holding it. As far as the shot though, didn't really feel much. Well, not a whole lot of vibration. Good solid return with that string hitting there and makes it feel like you actually shot something. Overall, very, very, actually very surprised with this bow. Again, the back wall isn't that solid clump going into that limb. Uh, so if you like that with Prime, sorry guys, it's, it went to the cable now. But you can't really tell that big of a difference there as far as solid rigidity. So pretty impressive that you can still keep it that way going to the cable. But that's it. That's the Prime Black. So we're going to move on to the, the Prime 5. Definitely felt really good. Very good draw for how short this draw length or actual axle is. Man, that was a really good smooth draw for this. So actually very impressed. We sell more 3s than we do 1s. Honestly though, I... Man, that's, this is a great bow if you're riding horses or shooting ground blinds, tree stands, riding on bikes. Look at this bow, guys. That actually drew really, really nice. And it felt good. Felt good in the shot, solid. Obviously, that kick back there, like it did. I'm going to go ahead, if I was to run this, I'd run that stabilizer weight out there and have a nice, solid weight so to keep that balance there for me. Okay, we're going to move on. All right. This is the Prime Black 5. Again, they do have the Prime Black 3. We're not reviewing that bow today, but we did do the one already. So this is the 5. Again, same cam system, everything that way. The cool thing is, is obviously it does help with that zero knock travel, which makes it definitely a tunable bow. Uh, as far as tuning wise on these things, like I said earlier, pretty simple, not too bad to tune this year. The only problem is, is I just wish they had some kind of markings there for us to use for our uh, sinkholes like we used to. We're just, and there's other things to look at, but we're just not used to that yet. But we're gonna go ahead and shoot it, let you know what I feel. Again, if you're looking for a black five, there we go, again, 70 pounds. Now this drawing is pretty long, so it's gonna be a little bit long on me there. So you can see, but that cam, man, is just great. Just a great cam. That draw force curve just feels really good. The grip feels really good. It's really comfortable for me. It's right on the riser. So there's, there's no actual grip. It's just the riser. It's just really machined well. Holds good. Um, good valley. You can see. And you still got to sit there and almost push it forward. And again, you can adjust that. Uh, you can adjust that on this bow or on the other primes as far as how much you want, less or more, because of how those draw stops are. But good solid bow, kind of pulls through. Now I'm pulling a little bit hard into that back a little bit just because it's stretching me. That extra wrench is a little long, but let's see here, let's fill some sheets. Okay, so it just stopped. Oh no, it's still going. A little bit okay so just stop vibrating a little bit so definitely has that residual tuning basically fork to it definitely better than the previous years of points that have been long like anytime you get this really long riser you got more material out there it can add to that and exaggerate that vibration overall though once you get I can tell you once we put stabilizers on there man it sure it does a great job it kills it pretty good the balance definitely seems better than the one, obviously. I mean, we expect that from being a longer actual, actual axle and a longer riser there, so it gives you that more stability. The, again, the vibration, we're shooting these all naked, shooting them all side by side, so that's why I'm bringing them up. But once, once you get it all dressed up, it does do good. We've sold quite a few of these, we dress them up, and it feels really, really good in their hand. 
So don't really go off of you know the vibration right away when you're shooting these bows, and especially when you're going and shooting at these bows or any bows at your dealer when they're naked like that. You know, sometimes if you do shoot a stabilizer, just ask them, say, hey, do you mind if I shoot with a stabilizer on there? That'll give you a little bit more idea of what it's gonna feel like when you go to actually shoot the bows if you wanna compare them for your hunting setup. If you do shoot a stabilizer, which I recommend big time, definitely. That's a whole nother video. So that is the Black 5. It felt great on the hold, felt good on the draw length, felt good on that back wall. Very, very nice, real comfortable. It doesn't pull your shoulder out when you try to go forward. So that's, that's what I felt. The grip to me is really comfortable. The weight of it, the balance of it, and it, it definitely balances really well. I mean, it's, I mean, it's perfectly balanced. So you do have that, but again, you do have that. You hit it, you can feel that vibration, that residual going through. I don't know if you were to add some kind of even like rubber dampeners back into the backside here where like the, the, the quiver is going to or your back bar mounts or anything like that. Uh, you could maybe run something that way that'll help as well. Maybe some of those orbit dampeners that Bowtech has, that might help as far as if you don't shoot a stabilizer. But like I said, once you get everything on there, it shoots great. Okay, that's the Black Bows, the Black Series there from Prime. So overall Prime, great job. I know I say that pretty much about every bow manufacturer, but really this year, they all did a really good job. They really did. They kind of stepped up, performed, and if, if they didn't, they wouldn't be on people's walls and wouldn't be shooting them. So that's, uh, that's the bow reviews, guys, so thank you. Next thing that we're going to do is I'm going to shoot all the bows. We're going to shoot all of them. We're only going to shoot one per brand, okay? And they're all going to be in that 30 to the shorter draw, or shorter, shorter axle axle. That's the majority of what you guys are going to be shooting, especially in the east. But we're going to shoot all of those. We're going to shoot them all with one arrow that will weigh the same, same draw length, and same poundage. And we're going to shoot them through the chronograph and kind of list, just do that little speed thing really quick for you so you guys can see. So that'll be a quick video. You're going to see me shooting a bunch, boom, 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 boom. And then we'll overlay basically what we found in our results. So stay tuned. We're going to shoot some bows and see how fast they can go. Alright everybody, as you can see, we're standing here in front of the chronograph. We're going to shoot one arrow, which this is a V-Force Elite. Okay, This guy weighs in at 438 grams. So hopefully this will be pretty close to what setup you'll be shooting, or at least give you a good idea on what to reference off of here. So what we've done is we basically picked the smaller axle axle bows in the lineups, because we're going for speed right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to shoot basically every bow, and every brand. So I call it the battle of the brands. So what we've got for you is we're gonna shoot the Prime Black One, the Bowtech Revolt, the PSC Evo NXT 31, the Turbo and the RX4 series through Hoyt, and then we also have the standard Axis series and the aluminum, plus the VXRs, the 28 and the 31 and a half. We're gonna shoot all of those bows with this one arrow. I'm gonna shoot three times each through the chronograph and get the average speed, and we'll post that at the end. Now, you will see me shoot every bow, but I'm gonna speed it up pretty quick due to the video time and everything, and you guys, you guys have lives too to sit here. So, we're gonna sit here, we're gonna fast forward a little bit, but I will mention every bow that I'm gonna be shooting right off the bat. We'll shoot them, and then we'll go to the next, mention that bow again, and we'll go from there. All right, everybody? So here we go, let's see what we get. Hopefully, I bet you we're gonna have a surprise, but we'll see what we got. So the first one we're gonna shoot is this black one. Again, 29, all these bows are at 29 inches, 71 pounds, with a 438 grain arrow. All right, next, we're gonna do the new Evo NXT 31. Again, these guys were a little underrated on speed when they first came out here. So you guys have seen other, or you can go and look at other reviews if you haven't seen any, but they're all saying about 10 to 12 feet per second faster than what they actually are rated. So we'll see what we got on this one. Now we've got the Revolt with their new cam lock technology. So let's see what this baby's got up its sleeves here.
So and again, before I mention as well, this bow is on the comfort setting. We will do one more round right after this with the speed setting or the performance setting. So we will do that. This is on comfort. All right, so we're back at it here with the Bowtech Revolt. We've now flipped the disc, so now we're at the performance setting on here, 29 inches, 71 pounds with a 438 grain arrow. See the difference here? Before, on the comfort setting, we shot 276, if you remember. Definitely a little bit more hump going into that performance setting. Holy cow. So 285, it looks like it brought us up about 10 feet, nine to 10 feet. So you can see that in your difference. So if you're shooting a comfort versus the performance, you're gonna gain about anywhere from that nine to 10 feet per second at 29 inch draw length. Every draw length might be a little different. So that's what you can guess right there. So that puts it up there in the performance mode, puts it up at the same speed as the Prime and the PSC. All right, so now we have the Hoyt Standard Axius here, 29 inches. We're gonna go and see what this baby's got. See what we can do here. So as of right now, the highest one we've read is the PSC at 287. Hoyt just picked it up a little bit, 289 with that Hoyt, so let's shoot a couple more. And it's got a real nice smooth draw too, the speed it's putting out. Real consistent with them, all 289. All right, so we just shot that Axius, now we're gonna shoot the new RX4 Turbo. See how this baby does, last time we got that 289, with the axis, so expecting this one to be obviously faster. Faster. All right, next one up is the VXR 31 and a half. So we're gonna do that one. Here, again, same draw length, same pounded, same arrow. Draws nice. All right, we have the VXR 28. We're gonna shoot this bad boy. So 31 and a half, shot 291. Still up on the screen there. Okay, everybody, there you go. The Battle of the Brands right there. Looks like Hoyt took it. As you can see right here, here are the results. So the Hoyt RX4 Turbo, 300 feet per second. Pretty incredible. Didn't really see any surprises. I was actually honestly thinking we're going to see some surprises between all these bows, but they all kind of stood up to what, what we thought. Uh, through the chronograph, so that's pretty awesome. Again, you can compare these speeds to any of the other bows in their lineups, and they'll give you a really good idea. I apologize that we didn't have time to go through all of them, but these guys were the, basically the speed bows for this year in their lineups, and that's why we did it that way. It's pretty cool to watch that bow tech to be able to see that comfort to performance setting difference between that 9 and 10 feet, so that was pretty neat. But hopefully you guys enjoyed these videos. Hopefully you guys learned some from something from these videos, and all, ultimately, the whole reason why we do this is to help you with your buying decision. So good luck with that. You've got a pretty good choice out there. A lot of great bows, a lot of good brands out there. So we definitely take it, this information, go to your pro shop, shoot them for yourself. Obviously, archery is very personal. I'm only one guy. So take it to your local pro shop or go to the local pro shop, shoot them all side by side, get a couple of them, three or four of them set up. And that way you can really compare apples to apples to make that proper and right decision for you for your next 2020 bow for this year. Or if you can't, I understand. If you don't have a pro shop to go to, totally get it. 
Hopefully this video, and that's the reason why we do it too, is hopefully this video has helped you narrow down those decisions on which ones to order, or you've hopefully made your decision after watching these videos. So in these videos, we went over the comfort of the bow, how it shoots, the performance of them, and then also we went over some little bit of tuning issues and some pros and cons with each bow and each brand. So hopefully that's helped you there make that decision. It's a little different than what you normally see, so please leave your comments below. Let us know what you thought of this video, if it was helpful or not, and if it was a big bother to you that we didn't go over all the specs and the draw lengths and everything like that between all these bows like we normally do. So again, your feedback is definitely welcome and we'd love to hear that because that's how we can get better. That's how we do it here at the store. We want to hear that criticism. We want to see if there's anything else we could do better with this video to make it more appealing to you and help you in the end. The biggest reason is to help you make that fine decision for your new bow. Again, thank you everybody. My name is TJ with Dead on Archery. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us. Our email is right below. So to contact us, at deadonarchery.com. So make sure you can you can email us there or, or leave us a comment. I will be checking these. I appreciate it. Again, I appreciate your time. This was a pretty lengthy video this year. So thank you so much for that. Your time is super valuable and I appreciate it. Again, thank you all from Boise, Idaho. We'll see you next year.